We have to tell you what you need to do. You need some magic dust. Has anyone got any magic dust? Right, hold your magic dust in the air. Alright. Uh, I need somebody else to help me who is incredibly clever and really, really good at school. Really, really good. Give them a big clap. Are you very good at drawing? Excellent. Alright, are we going to do a boy or a girl this time? A boy or a girl? Okay, here we are. Hold on tight, please. Now, then, what does this mean? Glasses. Sunglasses. Okay, glasses. Here we are, glasses. And what? Well done, well done. And what else do we need? Any anything else? Spiky short hair. Okay, spiky short hair. Go on then, quick, quick, quick. Oh, look, look at that. Brilliant. Very spiky hair. And anything else we need on our feet? Hello, darling. Hi. Oh. Leanne, yeah, we've got to go. What else do we need? What else do we need? Some eyes and uh, a mouth. Okay, a mouth. I know you're my good teacher. I know we've got a mouth. Look at that. Now, remember, Leanne, I want your honest opinion. Of course. Last one, I promise. <gasps> is no, all right. It is. It's too tight, isn't no. it? No, no, it's nice. Well, it's got to be more than nice. Two-day conference in Glasgow when I've only been in the job a week and no one bothers to tell me there's a black tie dinner. It looks fantastic, honest. Really? Can I really get away with this? Of course. Yeah. Mummy looks beautiful, doesn't she? Oh, thank you. <gasps> I don't want to go. You've got to go. <gasps> I want to tell them I'm ill. No. Yeah. It's only two nights and then you're back home. It will mm. go so quickly, trust me. Mm. It's your cab. What? What time? Oh, my God. Oh, all right, look, um, tell them I'll be down in five minutes. Oh, no, um, wait, 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 wait. OK, any problems, try Jenny first. Mm -hmm. And if she's out, I'll call Sarah. Yeah, but she won't put her boyfriend down for more than five minutes, so mm -hmm. um, that's Angie. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Chemist. Uh -huh. okay. And, uh, look, there's 800 quid. That's your next month in advance. Oh. We're, uh, we're square on your first two weeks, aren't we? Yes, well, thanks. OK. Makeup bag. Where's my makeup? Oh, God, why do they just vanish when you need them? Here, I've got it. Give me the hotel number. Yes. I've got the mobile number, and I'll let you know as soon as I get there what the what the hotel room number is. Of course. Is. I don't think you should do the, the little dark dip of clothes. No. Yes, and if her nose is still running, I won't take her. Do you think I'm awful leaving when she's got a cold? No. You're a good keeper. Keep mother. her out of the flower bed. I will. I promise. Now go on. I'll be okay. Won't we? Oh, yes. I've never left her before. Oh, I'm gonna miss you so much. <laughs> oh, just go quickly. Come on. Just go. I'll be fine, I promise. I'll see you Thursday. Come on, Thursday. Wait, bye bye for me. I'm going. Look, just go, go. Pops, I'll see you on Thursday. See you on Thursday. Be Wait, good. Bye bye. Okay, I'm going.
Nobody said I need my passport. Or your driver's license. You can't fly without photo ID. Well, I, I don't have my driver. Look, it's Glasgow. It's not bloody Baghdad. Oh, come on, Liam. Where are you? Poppy, 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 Poppy. Bit of a baby, she. Okay, Chosen, what do you think? Well, you're here on time. She gets my vote. Morning, guys and gals. Child protection need an SIO. I said you would be up for it. Oh, you did what? Won't take you long. 18 month old girl died in her bed. Yeah, terribly sad, Michael. What's it got to do with us? Child protection or strapped out. Oh, come on, do you see me putting my feet up? Hey, Roisin, we lost the toss on this one. Right, off you go. See you there in an hour. Did you say 18 months? Go get something. Just the mother inside. She says she got back, the nanny had disappeared. Got death? Probably. What about the father? Oh, don't go there. Single mother and the father took off. Hey, what do you mean, probably a cop death? Susan McDonald? I'm DCI Roisin Connor. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you some questions. in her cot and uh, I was so relieved you know that she was all right she was just sleeping was Poppy on any medication Susie no I give her cowpaw when she's tea why are you asking me this where's Leanne have you found Leanne is Leanne your nanny Yes, I've told them all this. She's gone. She's left. It's okay. Uh, How long was Leanne with you? Uh, uh, two two weeks. I I gave her all this money, and, and now she's gone and left my baby on 
her own. Just clean me out. <laughs> okay, Susie, breathe, breathe. That's good. Okay, now when you say cleaned you out, what do you mean exactly? I, I came home and my god, oh, it's gone. She's gone. Where's she gone? Okay, what about Leanne's mobile number? Do you have it? You've got a mobile phone. So she could ring me. If she needed to. So she could ring. <laughs> Mother's car's gone walkabout. Look, can you call in and get it circulated, lost or stolen? Cheers. You all right, mate? How's it going? Fine. You, uh, like the place, do you? Um, I like Fire Brigade. Well, why's that, then? I have a truck from that. Did Leanne kill the baby? Do you know Leanne? Yes, he was nice. They were playing out here. Were you playing out here yesterday evening? Yes. Did you... See Leanne leave the house at all? No. It would have been after tea time, I reckon. She would have left in a car. Half past six. Pardon? I like cars. Are you sure it was half past six? I have my grandpa swap these days since he snuffed it. Very good on you, it looks too. What's your name? Miles Deacon. Thank you, Miles. Okay, can you trace that for me, please? Thank you. Anything on the car? Yeah, a member of the public called it in as abandoned early this morning. What, a six now? <laughs> yeah, well, it was left on the Green Ash estate in Kennington. In Kennington? Yeah, with the doors open, so the local arson team had a bring and burn derby. They sort all for forensics to go in. Fantastic. OK, our priority is to find the nanny, find out what the hell happened here. Her CV. Well, the referees must have said all the right things. I mean, can you remember back um, when you were talking to them? Does anything now seem strange? I never, um, I, I never actually spoke to them. What? I tried. I couldn't get through. Oh. Why not? One lot were uh, away or something, and and the other lot had a a new nanny whose, whose English was just just terrible. But they didn't even get the message. Look, I I didn't have time. I'd seen three girls. I've got their CVs here somewhere too. It's just the just she just she's, she seems so right, and we we got on straight away. I just started a, a, a new job, and this trick came up. I just I I, I had to. Get someone in and, and settled with, with Poppy. Oh, I mean, no, you know, that, that's fair enough. No, it's not. It's not fair enough. It's not fair enough. I can't believe he stole my bracelet. I, I, I had a, a, a bracelet, a Victorian ruby bracelet. My mum gave it to me. I used to keep it in this box. There's the back there. Are you sure it's not still there? No, it's not. Some women don't deserve to have children. It's a bit harsh, isn't it? Hmm. Oh, come on, Satch. I mean, you hire some girl you don't know from Adam to move into your house and look after your baby and you don't find out where they're from. It's just irresponsible. And you know she paid her in cash, so we don't even have a bank account to go on. OK, you're right. Two minutes. I want to check those references even if she doesn't, OK? Yeah, yeah, look, I'll, I'll pick up some on the way home. Look, I thought, um... When we hired Bianca, did we, um, did we actually check her references? Oh, we did. 
Good. Now, uh, no, I won't do that. Right. Syringe, please. And a specimen bottle. Soapy water in her stomach. Quite a lot of it. Which is rather odd, considering she was found tucked up in bed in her pyjamas. What are you saying? As well as the soapy water, she has hyperinflated lungs, um, bruises under the skin on her upper arms, consistent with um, hard gripping or shaking, or even holding like this. I mean, frankly, it's an extremely suspicious picture. It's entirely up to you to find out how she died, but if you were to start with the supposition that she was held under her bath water until she drowned, I wonder. Might save you some legwork. So you're saying this baby girl was murdered? Poppy McDonald, 18 months old. Now her mother comes home and finds her apparently unconscious in the bed at about 8.30 p.m. Now at 8.37 she called the ambulance but by the time they got there all they could do was pronounce Poppy dead. Now her nanny, Leanne Taylor, and the family car went missing at approximately 6.30 p.m. Oh, and we do have a witness. Oh, we got a witness? Uh, just the neighbour's kid. Um, we'll bring him in for interview as soon as the parents get back. The pathologist found injuries consistent with physical abuse. His report suggests the puppy was drowned, and then she was dressed and she was put back into bed again. Maybe the nanny, off on the family side? Nice lady. Mm. We got a time of death? Uh, they gave us uh, 7.30, but it's give or take a couple hours, Mike, so it's uh, very little use to us. Oh, we do have a witness who heard the bath water drain out at about 7 o'clock that evening. He hears it every night. Yeah. Okay, any evidence of physical abuse beyond drowning? Well, oh, Poppy had bruised arms, plus she had a damaged frenulum. It's the um, bit of skin between your top lip and your gum. Now, the pathologist said it could have been caused by someone forcing or ramming a feed bottle into her mouth. And the mother said that the nanny had fed her exclusively for the last week. Well, we've got a CV. Uh, she gave several references to Susan McDonald. Let's make sure we check them on that. I'm all on it. Um, the first one that we've got is a Mr. and Mrs. Nelson. You and I will do that, OK? Right, Socko's in the house at the moment, so if that kid lost one drop of blood, I want to found, OK? I want the place light-sourced, fingerprinted, the works. Liam was a very self-contained person. That's what was so lovely about her. She kept the kitchen so clean, no mess. She could be a bit efficient. Oh, he's too soft, he knows he is. Do you know where she went? We weren't getting on so well by the time she left. We had words on one or two occasions. And you paid her cash? Oh, no, I kept things very straight. We had a standing order. Well, good. Could I get her bank account details, please? George? 
I'd have to call the bank. Could you? Oh. Well, go on then. I've had to end up with a Polish one. <laughs> Nanny. I don't have to work, though, so it should be all right. I can keep an eye on her. <laughs> She's a bit of a lump, to be honest. The heart's in the right place, though. Which is the main thing. <laughs> no friends, no boyfriends. Not a bad word against her. Thanks. Now, if we have to wait for the bank to roll over on this, we are going to be here forever. Yeah, Lisa's best mate works there. Oh, she's a good girl. Maybe she'll get something. Didn't hear that, Satch. No, that's fine. Yeah, we're in the park. No, she's good. She's good. Yeah. Hey! Hi. You should have rung me back. I need to talk. I've already told you what to do. So just do it. Hello, gorgeous. Okay? Sash, come on. Fine, fine. Lisa's mate came through with an address for Leah. Oh, great. Let's get over there. Yeah, well, uh, Walker called. I told him, and he said he'd go over and pick her up himself. Oh, you are joking. He says we're to carry on checking Leanne's references. Oh, that cheeky sod. Hello, I am Detective Chief Superintendent Mike Walker. This is DC Jeffrey Dobbs. Does Leanne Taylor live here? She used to. I'm a mother. Ah, do you have any idea where she is at the moment? Something happened to Leanne. Oh, we just need to talk to her, Mrs. Taylor. She's just started a very good job up in North London. Do you have the address where she's working, Mrs. Taylor? Yeah. Is your nanny around? Can I help you? Hello, I'm Chief Superintendent Mike Walker. Is Leanne Taylor around? Yeah, she is. Sorry, I mean, that's me. Why? What's happened? Y you're Leanne Taylor. What's up? Is it my mum? Uh, no, your mother's fine enough. Did you ever work for Mrs. Susie MacDonald? Who? Well, we have just met the real Leanne Taylor. And she's got a photo driving license to prove it. We've just wasted a hell of a lot of bloody time chasing the wrong bloody woman. We might as well have been looking for Mickey Mouse. Thank you for that insight, Jeffrey. We have completely underestimated her. Why the hell didn't you ask for DNA? What are you talking about? There was no need. Roisin, we've got an 18-month-old who was murdered in cold blood and we're getting precisely nowhere. Get back to the McDonald's house. Mike, forensics are already there. Well, tell them to strip the bloody nanny's bedroom to pieces. Old coffee cups under the bed. Hoover up every flake of skin if they have to. We need DNA and fingerprints. I just want to know who the hell we're actually chasing right here. Well, we've no problem getting that DNA. It's not going to tell us where she is, though, is it? No, it's as good as it gets. Joe, have we had this off, this vent? No, not yet. It's loose. Cannabis resin. Mm, it smells fresh. Just listen to the expert. Thank you. What made you look there? Well, I had my secrets as a kid. Yeah? Yeah. Glad you did. This is where we've come to so far. I'm afraid your nanny is not who you think she is. She stole the identity of another nanny called Leanne Taylor. So, um... Does, does that mean you know who she really is? I need to know if there's anything more you can tell us. Like what? Like, did she talk about her family? Did she ever mention her parents? She, uh, she said they, 
both died ten years ago. Car, car crash. She, she said she was fostered. Are you sure you can't find any photos of her? She wasn't with me very long. Uh, sorry to disturb you. Do, do you recognise this child? Yes, I recognise her. She's got a new nanny. Um, I never spoke to her, but um, she did. We need to find Leanne, love. When did you last speak to her? Here at a party on Tuesday with Poppy. And have you been in contact since then? No, I've not seen her. No phone calls, no text messages? No. Well, if she does get in contact, will you please just phone me on this number? Any time, in the strictest confidence, yeah? Hi, how are you? You've heard. The police came to my office. They shouldn't oh, have Please, been don't start. Were you ever going to tell me? I couldn't make myself ring you. Oh, yeah, of course. I, I don't count. Once you knew, it was final. Can you imagine how it felt coming from the police? I'm sorry. I really am. Wish to God I'd seen her more often. Why did you have to go and get a job? I was sending you a lot of money. Well, at least you won't have to do that anymore. Oh, my God, that's what you came round to tell me, isn't it? I didn't want you to be surprised when the money wasn't in your account. Still the same, Matthew, eh? Hey, Mike, look at this. What? It's perfectchildcare.co.uk, all these families advertising for nannies. What? I mean, you got photos, contact details, all their wealth spread out on a plate. I mean, look at it. Close-ups of the kids. I mean, this is a predator's paradise. Yeah, I know, Sarge, but it's not Leanne's M.O. I wouldn't waste your time. All right, dear Palmer. I've been through all Leanne's mobile calls. Their nannies and mother she met in the playground, but I've got nothing from them. Oh, somebody must have something. Boss, I've got this nanny on the line. He says she's got proof that Susie McDonald abused Poppy. Bring her in. Let's be clear here, Kim Lee. You know Susie McDonald. We say hello in the playground. I see her many times. And you know Leanne? Yes. We get on well. Do you know where she is? No. Sorry. OK, so you say you have something to show us? I find this. Susie. And Poppy. Who took this? I do. I, I take many pictures there. When? About a month ago. I don't know. Maybe six weeks. But before Leanne is her nanny. Did you ever see Poppy with her father? No. Susie said he leave a long time ago. So you think Susie is violent? Someone make bruises. Get someone in and, and send now Poppy is dead. Hello, Miles. Um, got some of Poppy's toys here. I wondered, would you like them? Maybe. What? Well, what's all this say? These are. These are her bathroom toys. And uh, this is this is her mobile. Baby bees, look. It's for babies. I like cars. How's it going in cars? Uh, well, these are pretty. Can't you see? She used to like um, playing with these. It's for babies. I better go in now. They were puppies. It's dead, though. 
I've got Sam checking Poppy's medical records at the local hospital and her GP. God, it would help us so much if we knew exactly what time Poppy drowned. We got anything on the minicab driver? No. Susie said it was a towel she picked up at Heathrow. Middle Eastern appearance, dirty white car. She didn't even pay him. Yeah. What about CCTV at Heathrow? They must have picked up his license. Yeah, it did, but it was a clone number plate. The real one's registered up in Norfolk somewhere. What if she did do it? Hmm? Susie. What if... What if Leanne, or whatever the hell her name is, um, got offered a better job, got bored, um, took the bracelet, fancied the car, and just left? You know, what if Susie is uh, frustrated, she's tired, she comes home, the baby's screaming... What, now she kills her own kid? Come on, Roshi. Mothers do, Mike. You've seen her, she's in pieces. Yeah. What, could be guilt? Uh, any luck on the husband? Yeah, I, um, had a word, actually. What? Well, I went to see him. You did what? When? Well, it was knocking me that Susie wasn't keeping him in the picture. I mean, you know, Poppy was his kid, too. I think not the way these women carry on sometimes. You know, it really pisses me off. For God's sake, Serge, what is this? Father's for bloody justice day. When the hell were you going to tell us all this? Well, I didn't think it was that important. I mean, he hasn't seen her for months. It's in my report. Oh, Satch. OK. Call him up now and get him in. Pronto. Fine. Hey, what about this, uh, the kid next door, the one who saw the car speeding off? Oh, yeah, his father's bringing him in this afternoon. He wants to have a look at the police cars, apparently. OK. Let us hope we get something very special from this kid. Did, um, anyone tell you he's Down syndrome? What? A kid with a watch? Yeah. Are you saying our only witness is a kid with Down syndrome? I don't fucking believe this. <sighs> Thanks very much for coming. Thank you. I just, um, I want to have a chat with Miles about what he saw the other day. Hello, Miles. I see you got your watch on. Yep. What's the time then? 25 to 3. So, what was that? Did you have to free I'm, um, I'm not being funny, but can, can he actually tell the time? Yeah, yeah, don't worry. It's, it's that watch. It's never right. You what? It was my dad's. It looks good, but loses like the England football team. Give it here, Miles. Yep. I uh, wound it up last night and put it right. It's already three quarters of an hour out. I want to get him a nice digital, but uh, he won't have it. Mr. Deacon, would you mind if I borrowed that watch for a while? Thank you. Susie, she's not quite what she seems. When we first met, she was fine, but then she got so worked up about having a baby. Which was a problem? Not at all. I wanted to have children. But she couldn't get pregnant. We did it all. Uh, right food, sex by the clock, thermometers, all that. And the more we couldn't, the worse she got. You mean the more she wanted to have a baby? Yeah. Okay, she was desperate to have a child. Nothing else mattered. That must have put quite a strain on your relationship. You could say that. Then she got pregnant, but she miscarried after 20 weeks. After I had the miscarriage, I'd spend all day crying. It was uh, hormones, apparently. But yeah, you don't care why it's happening when you're in it. 
I'd be desperate to see Matt, but when he actually did come in, all I could do was cry and yell at him and tell him to leave me alone. It was great at first. You know, he tried all he could to help me, but then when I would tell him to leave, he'd go. He was confused at first, and I think then he got disgusted. She got postnatal depression. Badly. I mean, really badly. She ended up having ECT. Can you believe it? In this day and age, they strapped her down and put electrodes on her. And did it work? It wasn't pleasant. I wouldn't wish it on anyone. How do you feel now, Susie? I've been fine ever since. Too late for Matt, though. We were so much in love when we met, but by the time I left, God, it was like we were at war. I'm sorry, I don't understand. You said you were Poppy's father. How? One goodbye too many. We slept together one last time. And that made her pregnant. Can you believe it? I'll tell you what. Seeing her again, it, it's brought it all back. It's really stirred things up again. Didn't he want to be involved with Poppy? I, I don't suppose I made it very easy for him. Wish I'd done it differently now. Okay. Thanks, Susie. No, hang on, one thing. Someone said they saw bruises on Poppy's face. Someone. Someone says. Got it. She was in the playground and she ran into another child on a swing. He sent her flying. She howled and howled. It was awful. I took her to the doctors. You can check. They'll have it on file. God, I can't believe someone would say that about me. So, the doctor checks out. Susie took Poppy in after a bump on the head with a swing. No stitches. I've requested a copy of Susie's psychiatric reports, but apparently she's been free from depression for three years. OK, well, that's something. Any photos of Leanne yet? Nah, I've been round all the nannies, but nothing. OK, well, what about this Kim Lee? I mean, she comes in with a photo of Susie and Poppy saying she's taken that, but she hasn't got a picture of Leanne, her best friend. Yeah, OK, I'll try her again. Good. Yeah, good news. The lab ran a 24-hour test on the watch. The boy's father said he wound it and set it right at 8 p.m. the previous evening. Now, the lab said the watch loses time, but at a very constant rate. So when it read 6.30, it was actually nearer 7.45. Now, what's that mean for us? Well, it means Leanne didn't leave the house till well after the bathwater was let out. Good work, Dave. Any more lights, please? Are they still looking for your nanny? She used to come in here on her own till I barred her. You what? Well, the cheeky little so-and-so ripped up a magazine. I don't understand. Well, she'd come in here, stand at the end around the corner so that I couldn't see her, try and get a free read. And then one day I saw her ripping out a page. So I said, look, you'll have to pay. And she said, no. So I slung her out. Which magazine? Do you, do you still have it? Oh, I could hardly sell it, could I? Oh, uh, here. Susie McDonald just called to tell us that Leanne got thrown out of her local news agents for ripping a page out of the Lady magazine. We've been on to them, and they've faxed over a copy of the missing page. Situation's vacant. Yes. She's just looking for another job. Charlie or Charlotte? Whichever you prefer. Charlotte. So, how did you enjoy Paris? Oh, I loved it. <laughs> Yeah, I was there for a couple of years. It's beautiful, isn't it? Mm. I was there myself, at the Sorbonne. Wow, really? It's where I met Leon. He's taking me back there at the end of the month, actually, for our wedding anniversary. Oh, that's lovely. How long will you be gone for? Oh, just a week. 
But that's why I need to get someone settled in so soon. Oh, that's not a problem for me. Good. When we moved back to London, I got a job working at the Royal Opera House. Oh, that must have been amazing. It was fun. Mm. But you can't really do it with a small child. It's just too demanding. Mm. Well, that's why it's world class, I suppose. <laughs> Are you an opera buff? I'm a beginner. <laughs> I've never really had the chance to explore it. But you must take the time. Hmm. Really, you must. I will, I promise. Trust me. I'd like to show you a typical weekly schedule. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's divided up into, into half-hourly slots and colour-coded. Personal trainer in orange, mm -hmm. um, charity committee in red. No, charity committee in green, hairdresser manicurist in red, so on and so forth. Do you follow? Mm hmm Yes, I see. Now, this is Oscar's food programme. Oscar hates vegetables, and he's not frightfully keen on fruit either. But I do insist that he eats three portions of each a day. Mm -hmm. And the fruit can't all be bananas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here she is. Hello, darling. Hello. Charlotte, this is Cecile. Hello, <laughs> Where's Oscar? He's in the garden playing. Okay. Thank you, Tracy. She hasn't worked out. Oh. May I? Yes, of course. That's <laughs> a big smile. <laughs> oh. Hello. Shall we sit down? Shall we? Oh, she's so pretty. Yeah, she's very good. You gorgeous girl. <laughs> <gasps> yes, yes, yes. And there we are. There we are. Oh, hello, uh, Mrs. Temple. Uh, yes, this is Detective Sergeant David Satchel from the Met. Oh, no, Satchel. Uh, yeah, like the uh, school bag. Yeah. Uh, look, I'm calling from the Metropolitan Police Murder Investigation Team. I understand you placed an advert in the lady recently. Could you tell me whether or not you've had any replies to that? Sorry, Mr. Temple, could you hold on one second? I've got a possible, I don't know, someone calling herself Charlie Simmons has been working her way through the nanny heads. I mean, by the sounds of it, she's a match for Leanne, but the family didn't know her. OK, I'll see if she comes up again. Are you right? What you got? Yeah, one moment, please. Um, yeah, we've got a possible read. It's um, white, five foot tall, mousy blonde hair, about 24, definitely sounded Scottish. Oh, Chase, right anyway. OK. We'll be back about two. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Nice phone, Kimberly. I must go. I'll uh, call you back. One of the nannies said that you were taking photos of the party Poppy was out with it. And you didn't mention that when you came into the station, did you? Do you mind if I take a look? Bad liner. Uh, hello, Mrs. Greenaway. Can you hear me? Oh, hello? Fantastic, Sam. Last we know who the hell we are chasing. Okay, print those off for me and distribute them to the team, okay? You're very faint. I, I need to know her name, Mrs. Greenaway. Can you tell me her name? Oh, she ain't got the toxicology report. Poppy's blood to trace it of cannabis. Oh, you're joking me. Yeah, I wish the hell I was. I've got her. This woman's just hired a nanny called Charlotte Simmons. Mother's on her mobile. Nanny's taking the kid to the playground. Where? Where? St. Beads, SW9. Let's get over there as quick as we can, folks. Yeah, Mrs. Greenaway, I'm just going to pass you over to one of my colleagues. Hold on a second. Yeah, I want you to double check us. Give what?
Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Excuse have you me. seen this woman? I'll show you this. I'm just looking for this girl. Hello, excuse me. Yeah. Sorry, have you seen this woman in the park? Excuse me, have either of you two seen this girl? Girls. Girls, have you seen this woman? There she is. Gavin. Yeah, Leanne Taylor. Have you seen this girl? Are you Oscar? Is your name Oscar? Yeah, it is. Get her! Come on, move, Satch! Uh, is this your nanny, darling? Uh, come up here, like. Oh, you're kidding me. Thanks. DC Dobbs. DC Dobbs. Very exciting, isn't it? It's like being in a movie. I'm arresting you on suspicion of the murder of Poppy McDonald. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Poppy McDonald? Are you serious? Oh, yeah, love. <coughs> We're serious, yeah. We're very, very serious. I bet you smoke. That's very bad. Get her down the neck. Come on. <laughs> <coughs> oh, this is absolutely ridiculous. I have no idea. In fact, I... Th what? Sign there. I think you've all gone mad, you know. I don't know what you're on about. And there. Uh... We got an ident from the fingerprints. Her name's Rachel Burns. She's actually 24, not 18. Huh? And she's got a record. She had a conditional discharge three years ago for shoplifting. Another one six months later for fighting in a pub. Now the address she used at the time was the family home, and they've moved on. We've got local plot trying to track them down now. But apart from that, there's nothing else on file. Well, we've been holding her for two hours, which gives us another 34. Let's hope that bloody solicitor doesn't take all day. Miss Burns. Yes. I'm your solicitor. They told me it would be a man. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. I need to get your signature on these, then we can start. I'm completely and utterly 110% innocent. You'll probably laugh when you hear it. Well, I expect you hear it all the time. But I assure you it's true. Where do I sign? Just there, please. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Hello. After you. Do you understand why you've been arrested? Not entirely. I, I mean, I understand why you think you want to talk to me, but I don't... I don't know why you actually think it's me. Well, I'll try and clarify that as we go through it, Miss Barnes. OK. I want to uh, pin down the different names you've been using. Where do they come from? Some of them I'd make up. It was a bit of fun. Added intrigue, you know? You didn't make up Leanne Taylor? No. She applied for a job with me. I took her CV. What are you talking about? Uh, well, it was to make getting a job easier. I put an advert into the lady, saying I had kids and wanted a nanny, and uh, I got swamped with CVs. Some of them were terrible, too. No, I just borrowed from the best ones. 
Well, can you give me uh, the names of all the people whose CVs you've stolen? Oh, no, come on. Uh, I couldn't remember them all anyway. I'm not sure I see the relevance, Superintendent. OK. Identity theft. Very fashionable. But probably nothing to do with the main issue. What did you do on um, Tuesday, 15th of August? August? Uh, what day was that? The day you left the McDonald household. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, I looked after Poppy all day. We got up as normal, had breakfast. Um, I took Poppy out to the shops. Then we went to the playground for our birthday party. Um, her mum came and picked us up there. She was flapping a bit, because she was off to Glasgow and she'd never left Poppy before. So I sorted her out. Um, after she left, I did tea um, and bath and bed, same as always. Talk me through it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I played with her, washed her hair, got her out, uh, put her into her pyjamas and then read her a story and then she went off to sleep. OK. Now, can you tell me what time you left the house uh, and why? Uh, well, I had to go out to get some bloody cigarettes. <laughs> I gave up a while back. I have been struggling. Well, you know. Um, uh, and with Susie away, I knew that I was a goner. <laughs> I have no willpower, you see. <laughs> can you remember what time this was? I don't know, about... Eight o'clock? Quarter to, maybe. I, I had to wait until Poppy went to sleep before I could leave. How long were you out of the house? Well, you see, that's the thing. Um, I knew I probably shouldn't. But it meant I'd be back quicker for Poppy. So I took the car. I parked it outside the garage. Uh, I left the bloody keys in the car. Stupid. And when I came out, the car had gone. <laughs> really? <laughs> I was quick, and you'd only gone to buy a pack of cigarettes. I know it was naughty, but I... I had a quick look at the magazines. No one gets droppy with you for having a browse. And, and my phone was in the car, so I was stuck. I... I went back to the house. I, I thought I'd call the police from there. You didn't get back, did you? No. Took ages. I'm not a very fast runner. Um, God. Uh, this is where I'm really ashamed. When I got to the end of the road and I saw all the ambulance and stuff outside the house, I knew something bad had happened and. God, I couldn't go in. I knew that it was my fault. Why was it your fault? Because I'd left her on her own, I, I panicked. I, I just went away. God. I knew there was only one thing that could have happened. I was in charge, and I knew that I'd get the blame. I'm sorry, I was just so scared. Um, she was fine when I left her. I'm really hot, actually. Um. Could I have a cup of tea or something? Please. Where's Walker? Interviewing Rachel Burns. Well, where? Number three. Oh, I can't believe he started without me. Prick. And DCI Connor will replace DS Sergio. There were injuries to Poppy's frenulum, the piece of skin under her top lip, consistent with someone ramming a bottle down her mouth. Well, that wasn't me. Can you explain to me how she had bruises on her upper arm consistent with vice-like gripping? Really? My God, that wasn't me. We also found water, a lot of water, bath water, in Poppy's stomach. She was drowned. No, that's impossible. And the postmortem showed traces of cannabis in Poppy's bloodstream. I have absolutely no idea how those injuries how any of those terrible things happened to Poppy. Don't you? 
I do know that there were bruises on Poppy's face before I got there. All of the girls in the playground noticed it. I don't like to say this. I really don't, but... Susie... She seemed very unstable to me. Um, I had another one like her who had very bad postnatal depression too and it stayed with her like Susie. I know she'd be fine one minute. She always ended up crying. And then one day she went crazy, started th throwing things around the place, yelling it at me to get out. <laughs> Have you actually asked Susie about that? Let me get this exactly right. When you left the house, Poppy was alone, in bed, asleep? Definitely, yep. She was wearing her tiger pyjamas. I'd washed them for her that morning. So you think what happened was that um, you left, her mum, Susie, comes back to the house, realises that you've gone, so she goes upstairs to her daughter's bedroom, takes her daughter out of bed, puts her in the bath, drowns her, takes her out of the bath, dries her, dresses her again, puts her back into bed and then calls an ambulance. Mm. It does sound incredible, but it's the only way that I can imagine it happened. Why would Susie do this? She really, really wanted this job so much. When she got back to the house, she saw that I was gone, thought I was gone for good, and then she wouldn't be able to go on the business trip. You really think that she cared that little for her own child? Look, I'm a nanny, all right? I see this all the time. Any woman who could leave their child with a total stranger just so they can go back to work, well, I'm sorry, but they're putting themselves first. You have to ask yourself, how much do they really care about their baby? But you took all the money, didn't you? 800 quid. Well, I didn't... I didn't want to leave it lying around. It felt safer to have it with me. Susie MacDonald said some jewellery went missing when you went, a bracelet. I never took anything. It was quite valuable, apparently. Rubies, I believe. Look, she gave me that bracelet. I was wearing it. Oh, God! You really have to speak to her. First she says I killed her daughter, now she's calling me a thief. I have not been informed that this is an investigation into theft as well. If you intend to ask any further questions on it, I need full disclosure and time to consult my client. I'm happy to leave it here. Just one more question, Rachel. I believe both your parents are dead. No, who told you that? Susie MacDonald. Oh, my God. Susie smoked weed. Of course, all her friends did. You want to know where that cannabis in Poppy's blood came from? Susie had a dinner party. And by the end of the evening, none of them could walk. They were so stoned. I think you need to ask Susie where she keeps her drugs. How do we miss this first time round? Well, we didn't. We went through footage within a half-mile perimeter of the house first. I mean, this was uh, over a mile away. Cool, look at her go. Yeah, but look at this. Ten minutes earlier. Satch, get that boy's face out on an APB. Oh, it's done. He's a regular customer. They're bringing him over for a chat. Rachel's got an answer for everything. And all we've got on her is that she's done a runner. What if she's done this before? Satch, get out of the small ad section of that magazine. Get a list of all the employers who advertised there over the last, say, what, 18 months. We're going to have to visit them all. We'll never get through them all in time. I want to start with London first. I want every single one of them visited and with a photograph, please. We're seeing. Can I have your autograph? Yeah, sure. Nah, she ain't just come out the blue, Satch. She's left a trail somewhere. We drove it round a bit, but it was a shed. And then we parked it up behind some flats and torched it. What was in the car? Baby seat, seat and shit. I don't know. Did you take anything? Like a bag, Harley? I never saw no bag. There was a bag with 800 pounds and an expensive bracelet in it. There might even have been clothes. I don't know. But can you explain to me how that went missing? I don't even know what you mean. We know, Harley. We know that you took the bag. I don't even know now what you're on about. You're going to have to stop lying to me, Harley. I told you I'm not lying. <laughs> OK, OK, let's see. What have we got here? We've got you taking at least two cars without consent. We've got you wasting police time. And we've got arson. Now, you may just be a little kid, Harley, not understand, but arson is a pretty big deal. 
Okay, you go into a court shrugging like that. Do you know what the magistrates are going to say? They're going to say, there's a stupid little kid that doesn't care. Now, if he doesn't care, why should we care? Do you know what happens when magistrates don't care, Harley? You can measure that in years. Do you understand me? Years, Harley. It wasn't me, all right? Eric done it. He burnt the car and took the bag around the corner behind the flats. He's the one. He had the money. He gave me the bracelet and I gave it to my girlfriend, but she said it was skank, and then she lost it. Have you still got the bag? Why would I? Where is it then? Dumped it. But you two need to seriously lighten up, man. Jeez. Boss. Okay, great. There's no money in it. Mm. Now, who's the baby? Well, I don't know. It's not popping with it. Oh, look at the clothes. It must be a boy. Who the hell is he? Yeah, there's some writing on the back of that. Huh. Get it copied. Get the original off to the lab, yeah? Who's this? I don't know. Haven't the faintest idea. What's found in your bag? Well, I didn't put it there. It's got nothing to do with me. he can narrow it down to within a couple of months on a particular photographer. Ah, oh, such happy families. Well, you have a girl in cage come down here. Yeah, I think it uh, looks a bit pricey for us. Oh, come on, that is not our guy. What is he doing? Well, no, he's comparing the lighting. You see, different photographers have different... Okay, styles. that's our guy. Can you pull up the name and address, please? Uh, yes, I can. There you go. Yeah, oh, I love computers. Mr. Casper? Yes? I'm DCI, Roisin Connor. This is DS Satchel. Oh, can I help? May we come in? Have you ever employed a nanny? Yes, but it was a long time ago. Do you recognise this woman? That's Edie, isn't it? I'm sure it is. Yes, of course. Who's Edie? She was our nanny. What's she done? What's it got to do with us? We found this in her possessions. Joe. You shouldn't have come here. Why are you doing this? What am I doing, sir? Joe died two years ago. He died in his sleep, in his cot. We buried him. Will she collect all the evidence, get in touch with the coroner, and get a warrant for the exhumation of Joe Casper's body? I'm sorry, I can't agree to it. No way, it's behind us now. Oh, they'll find out they've got it wrong soon enough, I guess. It's such a shame they're wasting so much time on me when the real murderer is still out there. What would the man in the street see if he took a look at it, huh? Two dead babies, one nanny. Evidence of abuse in one, drug abuse in both. Come on! Or if you wanted to, you could sit by his cot and you could reach over. Put your hand over his face like that, and you could suffocate him so easily just by the weight of your hand. You found Poppy left alone. You realized that you were not going to be able to go on this very important business trip, that you've been abandoned once again, that your life was about to get very much harder once again. No. You say you returned home because you forgot your passport. You say you've lost jewelry. You seem to have forgotten a lot of things lately. I expect you can't even remember why you put Poppy in the bath. 
Did you do it, Rachel? No, I didn't. You tell me the truth now. I didn't. I really didn't. <laughs>